All right. Hello, everyone. The recording has officially been kicked off, which means we are going to dive right in. Uh, so I want to officially welcome everyone on the line to build your resume by donating time and talents to nonprofits. Uh, this is a Taproot Foundation event. Uh, so if you're listening to the recording, welcome, welcome to you as well. We're really, really excited and grateful to have you all with us today. I know we've got a lot of really uh, great content. I think it's cool content. I hope you will as well um, to dive into. So we're going to go ahead and get things kicked off, but please do keep those introductions coming in the chat um, because we do want to learn more about our wonderful volunteer community. So I'm joined by my wonderful colleague, uh, Jeff Brady, during today's events. Um, and so I'll, of course, let him have a chance to introduce himself, but I can kick things off first. Um, Kimberly Swartz, you can call me Kim, uh, pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm Taproot Senior Director of Community Engagement, which really just means that I get to focus on the experience that our nonprofits and volunteers and small businesses have as they connect with one another for skills-based volunteerism and nonprofit capacity building. So a pretty amazing job, if I do say so myself. Um, really, really looking forward to being with all of you today. Um, Jeff, you want to go ahead and hop in? Thank you, Kim. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for being here and your energy in the chat and, and using your listening skills to absorb this information and, and think about it. Um, I'm similarly blessed, uh, as Kim is, with the opportunity to steward corporate and philanthropic investment in Taproot Plus, uh, something that we'll talk about later in the hour um, and just helping make sure volunteers and nonprofits alike have an excellent experience through that platform. Absolutely. Uh, so a few logistics notes before we completely dive in. Uh, this is a webinar. So uh, attendees will be muted throughout. We're really relying on you using that chat box in the lower right corner of your screen to communicate with us. So please don't hesitate to ask questions, um, make comments, leave feedback. Uh, Jeff and I are going to be checking that chat box throughout, hopefully answering questions as we go. Um, but additionally, we do have one of our amazing colleagues from Taproot on the line, uh, Megan Gillette, uh, who is a senior program associate um, on the Taproot Plus team. So you may see Megan popping in and out, um, answering some broader questions, um, and then whatever would be more helpful for us to tackle um, in a more discussion-based way, we do have time for question and answer, a Q&A session at the very end of the event. So occasionally you may hear from Megan, like, this is a great question. I think more people may appreciate the answer to this one. I've boosted it to Jeff and Kim and they'll handle it at the end. So please do stick around for Q&A because we'll, we'll really be digging into the, the fun stuff. Um, another quick logistics note is that we are recording this event and that recording link will be shared with everyone who registered for the event today. We'll share that as soon as possible, hopefully later today, but at the very latest tomorrow morning. Um, and you will receive a PDF of the deck as well. So if there's some slides where maybe Jeff and I don't vocalize every single uh, element or bullet on the slide, never fear, you will receive that um, after the fact, as, as well as some other um, resources and, and links that we referenced during today's presentation. All right, so with the logistics out of the way, I know many of you have been kind enough to start introducing yourselves and some of the organizations that you work with. Hi, Valerie, she just introduced herself from a, a Habitat for Humanity of Greater San Francisco. Um, really appreciate you doing that. Please, everyone continue those introductions. Um, and as you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Taproot Foundation, um, because some of you did indicate when you signed up for the event, that uh, we were new to you. Um, and so I'll, I'll start there. That'll be a nice grounding as we dig into the heart of today's presentation, which is really talking about how skills-based volunteerism uh, can really benefit your life and your professional uh, pathway. So 
here's a little bit more about our nonprofit. As you may know, Taproot is an organization that exists to support our fellow nonprofits. We were founded as an organization back in at the early 2000s, kind of with this knowledge that there's a massive resource gap present in the social sector. We have organizations who may very well have the solutions to our world's most pressing social challenges, but they simply don't have the financial means or staff capacity or regular investment to carry out those missions to their fullest extent. And so Taproot is democratizing access to resources for nonprofits, regardless of their mission area, regardless of their budget size, um, who they're led by, how many years they've been in operations. We are really here to empower and enable mission-driven organizations. And we do that by mobilizing skilled volunteers like you all who are on the line with us today to advance resource equity, to close this resource gap. Um, and so I wanna share a little bit more uh, on the finer details of kind of how Taproot does work with volunteers. Um, so you'll see some fun stats on this slide right here, but really what I hope it illustrates for you is just the breadth of the community that Taproot has fostered um, and facilitated over our 20 plus years of really leading the skills-based volunteerism space and building this movement where we wanna bake in the idea of giving back to every corporate professional's um, professional life cycle. So here you'll see our organization has engaged over 37,000 volunteers in partnerships with mission-driven organizations. Um, that's totaled nearly 2 million um, hours of volunteerism and around 300 million in donated uh, professional services to social good organizations. Um, and as I mentioned, our network is made up of social good organizations from uh, across issue areas. So technically in our system, I think we have 22 different issue areas registered, but um, we put a plus sign there too because we're, we're adding new ones every day. Um, and then of course, speaking of adding new things every day, we have around 400 plus virtual volunteer opportunities that are open and looking for volunteer partners right now. And those are updated daily. So our goal is that by the end of this webinar, by the end of us chatting today in our presentation, you will have all the information, but hopefully the inspiration that you need to go and browse through those 400 plus uh, virtual opportunities, all with verified nonprofit organizations with really amazing causes. Um, and you'll be ready to sign up uh, to claim one of those volunteer opportunities and, and start diving in, donating your professional skills. All right, so again, since of many of you noted in registration that this is something that's completely new to you, skills-based volunteerism is a new term. Maybe you've just heard of regular volunteering where you go to a great organization like Habitat of Greater San Francisco and you work on uh, putting up a wall, painting a wall, installing windows, et cetera which is all incredibly important work and also extremely valuable for nonprofit organizations. They need those boots on the ground. They need those traditional volunteers. But what Taproot is gonna be talking about here today is skills-based volunteerism, which is a donation of one's abilities, talents, networks, and resources to social good organizations. Um, and this is also commonly referred to as uh, pro bono consulting. And so it's a bit of a transferable term um, and they all have the same meaning. It's, it's this donation of your unique expertise, what you are really a specialist at. Um, and something that I'll note here is that Sometimes when Taproot mentions this term pro bono, we get a note of surprise from folks because it's so commonly associated with the legal space, which I personally think is a beautiful thing. The pro bono ethic, this idea of skills-based donations, skills-based volunteering is so well-established in the legal field that 
a certain number of pro bono hours is built into uh, a law student's pathway through school. It's built into many firms. You have to execute a certain number of pro bono cases, pro bono hours per year. And as I mentioned, you know, Taproot Foundation was created in the early 2000s because of this nonprofit resource gap and because of this knowledge that that ethic that exists in the legal space hasn't yet been carried over into other business spaces. And so we focus our programs in the areas of marketing and communications, um, human resources and leadership development, IT and technology, business development and strategy, as well as finance, accounting, um, and operations and data, because we're trying to build this really, really amazing ethic of giving back as a way to grow your professional network and career and resume um, that already exists in the legal space to a really amazing degree. So what is skills-based volunteerism? Obviously for the nonprofits, it amounts to added capacity. It gives them the tools uh, they need to really support the missions that they're driving home in our communities. Um, so for nonprofits, working with skilled volunteers fills experience gaps and gives them more time and tools to do the things that they are uniquely really great at. Um, and really adds to their capacity to better serve our community. Um, and then it also just builds lasting connections between volunteers and the nonprofits they serve. Um, while not expected, it's really common to see volunteers and nonprofits develop really strong relationships that extend beyond the initial uh, skills-based volunteering engagement. Um, we've heard, I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've heard instances and stories of volunteers who maybe only donate initially an hour of time and expertise to a nonprofit. And then that hour turns into, you know what, let's do a multi-week project together. And then that multi-week project ends up turning into a position on their board because they have truly fallen in love with that organization's mission. And the organization has really found a true thought partner um, in that volunteer. And so while we can't guarantee it, um, I can for personally vouch for the really personal uh, community building elements that do really arise out of skills-based volunteerism. And then of course, uh, the impact cannot be undersold here. This is a great opportunity to provide really long-term value to social good organizations. So we are going to dig more into those benefits that I kind of just glossed over. That's really going to be the heart of today's presentation. But first, I want to pass the mic over to Jeff to dig into um, ways we can better get to know all the folks we have on the line today. Uh, thank you, Kim. Thank you for the introduction to Taproot, uh, ourselves, the work of skill-based volunteering. And I know we have such a great group in this chat because you have already uh, started to anticipate some of our questions. Um, so think, think about your superpowers. Um, please drop into the chat. Some of you already have started with this, but this is your space for a humble brag. This is a space for your current boss or your future boss to come across this webinar and see what things you're just excelling with confidence. So don't worry if you feel arrogant about your skills. This is the moment where we wanna hear from you in the chat what your superpower is. This could be hard skills. It could be soft skills. Thanks, Diana, for getting us started with that. We heard from Andre about Salesforce, Sarah about e-commerce, Cynthia, a bilingual nature of your work. Love it on the soft skills. Ashvin, the empathy. I was going to say that my start by modeling my own behavior is a, a little ridiculous, but it can start with a smile and transform into uh, interpersonal. Excellent. Understanding the consumer, Jennifer. Admin and operations. Kim had mentioned how essential it is for nonprofits to receive support in their core business functions. Research, storytelling. I recall, I believe it was Jennifer from Boston with the uh, writing, grant writing, probably nonprofits number one need, not just across the United States, but worldwide. Their need to introduce themselves in a positive light to donors. 
Yeah, wonderful. Uh, and I'm seeing this just the most recent chat, um, the transdisciplinary uh, nature and view of things. Perspective is going to be an important superpower that everybody brings. You could be bringing the superpower um, in your current occupation. You could also be bringing this superpower based on what you do, a side hustle, a consultancy on the side, or just something that you are extremely talented and passionate about as well. Terrific answers, uh, terrific engagement from the chat. So we thank you for, for doing, um, for modeling great behavior there. Next question to get to know you all a little bit better would be, uh, what social issues uh, are, are you bringing that are important to you? Kim had mentioned that through Taproot Plus, uh, we offer uh, 22 social issue areas, um, but there's a plus beside that because we know that the nonprofits that are engaging through Taproot and through skill-based volunteering extend far beyond that. But we would love to know from you, and I'm sure others would know as well, among the audience that's in the room this afternoon, what is it that you care about? You can start with the theme and, and then to the extent that you feel safe and comfortable in this space, uh, I'd love you to elaborate on why it is that that cause is important to you. I'll start myself as well and just say that uh, education is important literacy to refine it a little bit further and to refine it even further than that third grade reading and its importance in the United States as it connects to high school graduation. That interest exploded when I had children. Terrific. So I see Jennifer uh, education and poverty education access. So we share that as, as people environment. Women and girls empowerment, wonderful. These are all topics you'll be able to find uh, through your experience on Taproot Plus and organizations that are, are serving that. Housing and homelessness, I'm sure Habitat for Humanity and our, our friend there cares about that issue as well as works on that issue as well. Yeah, wonderful. A lot of these are hard topics as well. So um, thank you for sharing that you're interested about them and also that you're here in this space uh, wanting to uh, make a difference in those areas as, as well. I think we have someone from the UN and uh, maybe it was the, the person with us today of uh, working on food insecurity, I believe in Chicago. So already um, you're seeing more and more connections here. Service delivery in the uh, health and world, where, uh, healthcare space. Yeah, excellent. Okay, next question. Again, love your, your, um, your transparency and vulnerability here. Um, take a moment to think about this. Uh, remember that this call is being recorded, so you don't want to necessarily say that you're looking to skill-based volunteering to get out of your current job, but it could be something that you're looking to transition um, into, um, maybe a new department within your company, could be a promotion, could be some talking points for a performance review. What are some of the reasons that you're looking to serve as a skill-based volunteer? No, I love it. Retired and you want to serve. So thank you, Sadir, for continuing to stay active. We're on the question now of uh, what is it? What's the career move? Certainly, we'll hope in uh, the remaining time that we have uh, to talk about how you will list your volunteer skills for a resume. Get US experience. I, I love that, uh, Joanne, whether it's because uh, you're here in the United States or you'll be coming to the United States and unable to work because of the visa process. Uh, we'll also talk about how wonderful volunteering can be as a way of experiencing different cultures and, and meeting new people. Uh, leadership film uh, experience, love it. Yeah, love how these um, chat messages are coming in, and we'll hope to address many or all all of them. Reentering the workforce, yeah, love it as well. Job transition, sorry to hear about that moment, uh, Cindy. Of, of course, it um, happens and is hard. Um, volunteering can be an excellent way of staying active and looking great to future employers. 
Yeah, wonderful. Um, I love this engagement. So I'll, I'll stop, pass it back to Kim uh, and, and let, uh, let her take us through the next couple of slides. Really appreciate you doing that, Jeff, and really appreciate everyone who's who's taken the time to just share so openly about themselves and kind of their personal motivations for, first of all, joining us today, but also just your interest in skills-based volunteerism and what you can provide to organizations, but also what it could provide to you and, and your life and your family and your professional pathway as well. Um, so please, um, if you are still noodling on an answer, uh, the chat is still open and we'll absolutely still be reading through those and in hopes of addressing some of those, those motivations um, throughout the rest of our presentation. Uh, so let's get into the more tangible benefits that come to you as an individual when you engage with pro bono consulting with skills-based volunteerism. And we're, we're going to talk about four core um, benefits today um, and spend a fair amount of time on each. But I want to make sure that we really, really underline this first one. Um, the main benefit of giving of yourself, giving of your time and expertise being you are able to support really important social causes. And so let's dig into why this especially matters um, in this moment. So Giving USA, um, which is a really fantastic organization, and, and they do a lot of great um, annual research on kind of the state of philanthropy, the state of um, how much people are giving from a financial uh, sense, but also a volunteerism sense on a year to year basis specific to the United States. Um, and in their annual estimate of contributions from foundations, um, both corporate and philanthropic, uh, individual givers um, and companies found that 2022 was unfortunately one of the worst years in philanthropy history. Giving dropped over 10% um, after inflation, a really rare occurrence since the advent of Giving USA's annual tracking, which has been going on for decades at this point. Um, and so nonprofits continue to report difficulties with volunteer recruitment and engagement on top of this um, new report on drops in financial donations with various national surveys really spotlighting challenges that nonprofits face in finding hands-on and skills-based volunteer support as well as uh, working board members. Um, and, you know, Tapper has dug into this issue with our own volunteer community members as well. And we recognize that this has been a hard period for folks, um, you know, with community members reporting struggling with lack of time, continuing COVID-19 pandemic stressors, uh, and uncertainty that their donations will make a difference. Um, and according to the National Center for Nonprofits and Chronicle of Philanthropy, this is all coupled with um, some startling statistics that nearly half of nonprofit CEOs surveyed in mid-2022 said that recruiting enough volunteers was still a major problem and was limiting to their ability to accomplish their mission. So it's troubling statistics and it's hitting at an unfortunate time when community needs continue to increase while funding and volunteer support for nonprofits uh, has continued to decline. Um, and this is compared to kind of volunteerism and donation spikes in early 2020, um, but also compared to pre-pandemic numbers. And so what we really want to underline today and, and what all of this is to say is that Making a difference alongside a social cause that you care about is truly the biggest benefit that any individual could have from volunteering your professional skills. Um, these people are working day in and day out. These organizations are working day in and day out to make our communities stronger, kinder, and more just. And this is an opportunity to become truly a part of their teams and to tackle these really pressing issues 
from the front lines with these organizations and alongside them as a partner. Nonprofits have been pulling additional weight over the past three years, serving really heightened community needs, community needs that have not decreased, although funding and donations from foundations and companies to those nonprofits has for a large part. And we also know that skills-based volunteerism works for nonprofits. In 2022, 84% of Taproot nonprofits reported that the work of their skilled volunteer partner directly led to the increased effectiveness of their mission. 47% reported that the pro bono donation actually resulted in the increased reach of their nonprofit's mission. And then an additional 30% reported that that skills-based volunteer project actually helped them expand revenue as a result. Um, and then an additional 30% reported that because of the pro bono donation, they were actually able to reduce the cost of operating their mission, allowing them to then use those funds to hire more staff members and to reach more community members. In addition to that, Nonprofits see a ton of value and get a really high quality of service from skills-based volunteerism partnerships. Um, I don't know how many folks here on the line are, are familiar with uh, the quality rating system of, of Net Promoter Score. We're, we're happy to share more information about that if that's um, a new term for anyone. But it's a it's commonly used uh, quality indicator of how much perceived value folks are getting from a certain product or service. Um, and I'm really happy to report that nonprofits get and report a ton of high quality, a ton of value from their work with pro bono consultants um, through Taproot. So, so far in 2023, we're seeing a net promoter score um, in the world-class range for both uh, of the core offerings that you'll have the opportunity to connect with through Taproot Plus, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on. But I do see that my colleague, Megan, has already published a banner at the top of your screen if, if you want to jump the gun and um, go to create your Taproot account and start exploring some of the opportunities early. But I do promise we'll, we'll speak to that a little bit more um, in depth later on. Um, but re they report world-class quality um, from these partnerships with volunteers uh, who have skills very similar to what you uh, shared earlier in the chat. Um, with an 86 uh, score for our multi-week projects and, and 96 for our one-hour uh, virtual consultation calls. Um, and then to speak to this uh, idea of nonprofits, uh, their needs growing, um, I, I can share really transparently that so far in 2023, we've seen a 10% increase in project requests from our nonprofit network and a 7% increase in uh, session requests, these one hour consultation calls from 2022 to 2023, really underlining that this demand is continuing to grow from nonprofits as their uh, ability to find resources elsewhere are shrinking due to this decrease in funding and decreases in volunteerism activity. So I also want to share that by sharing your professional skills with nonprofits, it's also incredibly financially valuable. So Taproot, in collaboration with a fellow nonprofit, Chief Executives for Corporate Purpose, we established the first average hourly value of skills-based volunteering in 2009. And that valuation has been uh, studied and, and revamped several times over the years. And um, the latest valuation is at $195 per hour. So most nonprofits in the Taproot community are operating on a very limited budget and may even be funding operations personally. Um, so they have a working board or maybe they just have uh, their founder is also acting as the executive director and they're not even able to uh, accept a salary yet. So completely volunteer led organizations, which means that bringing in paid consultants or paid contractors is not feasible for those organizations. And so based on our valuation of the value of skills based volunteerism, the skilled support provided through a multi-week partnership can be worth tens of thousands of dollars. And that's without even considering that long-term impact that I spoke to um, just a few moments ago about increased reach of mission or the increase in potential revenue that they're bringing in. And so 
I, I really want to underline that this form of volunteering is a great option for those who might not have thousands of dollars to donate to make a huge difference for a nonprofit. And you really just use the things that you're already good at. Uh, and so by sharing your skills, you're supporting the cause of the nonprofit and helping advance their mission without hurting their bottom line. Um, and so with that, Jeff, I would love to pass it back to you to cover some of the other benefits of skills-based. Thank you, Kim. It, it's hard to keep your enthusiasm and, and Sergova, you're just uh, accelerating it with how exciting it is um, about the impact that you're able to make. Uh, the next few slides are going to be um, not all about you, uh, but mostly ab about you. Uh, we hope that these next few slides will introduce the WIIFM, if you've heard that acronym before, the what's in it for me, but also understand that all of these um, benefits that you're receiving as a skill-based volunteer are also going to somebody else. Typically, as a skill-based volunteer, you'd be working with a single uh, leader from a nonprofit organization, but it could also be with a small team of organizations as well. So extroverts aren't going to need much help in this department to expand their network through skill-based volunteering. Um, but for the introverts uh, that may be in the room, um, an especial appeal to you to think about the fact that when someone is asking for your skills and you're bringing those skills, it can be a safe and inviting space um, for you to begin to expand your network when you might be uncomfortable doing that in other circumstances. Uh, the first I'd like you to think about, and this is reflected in the chat, uh, is geographically. Uh, we heard from Joanne that she's looking that they're looking to get U.S. experience from Cynthia as a return Peace Corps volunteer. Perhaps there's an opportunity through skill-based volunteering to return to some of the organizations that are either US-based or internationally based that are supporting issues uh, that are near and dear to their heart in Guatemala. It could be that you're in Seattle and you're moving to Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it could be that you're in Toledo, Ohio, but you grew up as a, a Florida resident in the Tampa Bay area. Skill-based volunteering can be an excellent way uh, by serving virtually um, to get to understand a community that you're either far away from uh, or that you're coming to or that you might even be, be visiting and, and just have family there. So geographically, skill-based volunteering is a great way to expand your network. Not only do you engage with one nonprofit leader, but you begin to understand uh, more about their community um, and other people that are important to the success of their nonprofit organization. With regards to positionally, uh, I also saw in the chat that there are some aspiring board members, uh, other individuals that are looking to get into senior management positions. And there might be others of you here on the call today um, that may want to be grounded because they are uh, with more frontline employees because they're in a senior management position. Skill-based volunteering can help with both um, the vertical up and the vertical down connections that you're able to make with people. Uh, similarly, there's horizontal opportunities to connect as a skill-based volunteer with your peers in different fields. So you might be a Salesforce administrator working in a particular industry, but there's a great opportunity to receive the kind of perspective that someone else who is similarly using Salesforce uh, might have in their organization. Uh, same could be true of a designer or others that are involved in um, a specific discipline that you are. There's great horizontal horizontal opportunities um, to um, experience when you serve as a skill-based volunteer. And finally, thematically, um, this is an opportunity that's really fun. You get to choose. Um, th by theme, I mean what your passion is. So many of you shared with us uh, what causes you care about most. Uh, but the theme can also be about skills. Um, so we heard from many of you about uh, financial management and administration and operations. Um, just because you're doing it for work doesn't mean that it's not uh, something that isn't you know, fun and energizing uh, to you. So thematically, there's an opportunity to connect with like-minded individuals and expand your network of folks that are either in the same uh, skill set and, and discipline that you are, as well as uh, the causes that you care about. But with regard to building your resume, skill-based volunteering uh, features um, 
a lot of very helpful uh, ways for you to uh, to move up, uh, to move to the side, uh, to re-engage. Um, uh, two bits of research that are often cited come from uh, Deloitte, a large consulting firm that found that uh, candidates that include their volunteer service are significantly more attractive to employers and hiring managers. Uh, the Guardian out of the United Kingdom had similarly said that 75% of employers say that adding your volunteer work uh, on a resume uh, boosts the job applicant's chances of being hired. So it's very important that you feature your volunteer work. Um, it's also um, very important for that work to be relevant. Um, you want to make sure that the work that you're highlighting in a limited amount of space on your, your resume uh, is, um, whether that's an A4 size or an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, uh, or a PDF, or what you're going to submit to a job resume. It should be relevant. Um, that's what a computer is going to search for, as well as um, uh, what you're going to talk about in an interview. And you want to be able to lean into the skills that you provided as a skill-based volunteer, because they're directly linked to the job that you're applying for, the promotion that you're looking for. Uh, the time and relevance um, with regard to uh, when that volunteer service occurred is also going to be important to prospective employers uh, for your resume. You don't want to list something that you did in 1989, uh, but you do want to find something uh, current. Location can also be important. I think if there are any hiring managers uh, that are in the group today, you can think about um, how Guatemala, uh, to use an example um, of our Return Peace Corps volunteer, uh, will elicit an emotional response once your resume gets to a human being and you're able to talk through it. So it can be a great conversation starter. Uh, also uh, to know for businesses that are in a community um, that you also care about that community beyond whatever you might have done professionally, but what you're choosing to do in your free, free time. Uh, just like your work professional experience section of a resume, you will want to prioritize your achievements. You won't necessarily just want to say that you did serve as a skill-based volunteer, but you'll want to be able to talk about um, the impact of your service. Um, so if you are uh, helping with a grant solicitation uh, and responding, uh, helping a nonprofit respond to um, a donor request, um, you'll want to talk about what the outcome of that request or grant application was if you're supporting social media and marketing, you want to think about how you'll want to communicate on your resume what the impact of that work meant with regard to increased followers, views, impressions, and, and what other other terms you would need to. Uh, I'm reminded of what Andre had uh, sh uh, shared in the chat about many of the hard skills that they offer. I need a glossary to understand what those terms are. Uh, but certainly a hiring manager wouldn't. And so uh, do prioritize the achievements, not just that you know some of these applications, but what it meant with regard to increased efficiency and productivity um, and satisfaction of a customer, perhaps, by entering those. Uh, and then the last, uh, I'm thinking back to what Jennifer had mentioned uh, about re-entering the workforce after raising children. So one uh, hard job uh, into another uh, Kathleen and Cindy with regard to going through job transition and others, uh, skill-based volunteering in particular uh, is a great way of filling employment gaps, um, saying that you're staying sharp on your skills, but also giving you something to talk about as well. Um, last, with regard to um, what's important for you about skill-based volunteering and your uh, resume and your job prospects um, is to uh, strengthen those those skills, really hone in on um, the hard and the soft skills um, that are going to be relevant um, for your satisfaction in a job and where you head next. Um, so that repetition uh, from the previous slide is intentional. Um, you also want to be strategic about what those skills are. Skill-based volunteering can give you an opportunity to serve in ways that you're unable to do on the job. And that's important to think about uh, as well. If you don't have the opportunity to run events in your current work, you will have that opportunity through skill-based volunteering. If you don't have the opportunity to work on your written and oral communications in your job, you may look for that opportunity through a nonprofit, um, through skill-based volunteering. Reinforcing soft skills um, is something that comes almost automatically with skill-based volunteering. You will be working with people 
um, aspects like teamwork, problem solving, communications, leadership skills are inherent to a skill-based volunteer opportunity. So through your resume, you're able to reinforce those soft skills and have experience with which to, to say um, to them uh, in an interview environment uh, after it's read on paper. And then last is uh, with regard to showing commitment, I think it's important to uh, note that the volunteer work that you'll want to put on a resume will want to allow you to go deeper into the storytelling uh, that you'll have to offer. Um, and so uh, we know members of Congress, for example, they're on 1800 committees. Um, what does that mean? Uh, do think about uh, when listing your volunteer experience on a resume, how you're going to go deeper into that storytelling. I'm sure that those members of Congress have many, many assistants and aides and other uh, hardworking individuals that are helping make them look so good. But with come when it comes to you as a skill-based volunteer, make sure that um, you're able to show your commitment. Um, research shows um, uh, from the Center for Economic Policy Research shows that 20 hours a year um, uh, significantly improves your job prospects when your volunteering can be associated with that duration. Doesn't mean you have to meet that threshold, um, but it, I do want you to think about um, what kind of story you're going to want to tell when listing a volunteer assignment. I love that focus uh, that you shared earlier on how skills-based volunteerism can help show who you are as a person to hiring managers. They often, it, it's difficult for them to get that just through a cover letter or a resume itself, but by showing your commitment to your community and showing like how specifically that has uh, showed up and been translated through these uh, different acts of services that you've done with local nonprofits or national nonprofits is a real way to help tell that story. So I really appreciate you sharing that, Jeff. And I'll also note that Jeff and I, our skills-based volunteers ourselves. So we, we do work for Taproot, but we regularly volunteer through Taproot and through other skills-based volunteerism intermediaries ourselves because we do really uh, practice what we preach in terms of like gaining these resume benefits and career building benefits and personal benefits that come from being pro bono consultants. So if you do just have any questions about our own experiences doing this, um, we're happy to address those as well. Um, really quickly, uh, because I, I just want to be cognizant and make sure that we leave enough time for some Q&A at the end, um, but this deck will be shared with you. So I have some tips here on just how to transition or, or what to think about as you're transitioning corporate expertise into the nonprofit sector, because I do know many of you noted that you don't have nonprofit experience to date. Um, that's definitely a great thing to be gained through skills-based volunteerism, but if you're new to it and that feels a little daunting, really encourage you to read through some of the advice on this slide. And I, I'd like to just focus on that bullet second to last around staying open-minded about volunteer roles that require a broad expertise. I, I do know that um, many folks that I speak with who are coming from the corporate environment are used to very, very specific lanes that they operate in within potentially a large corporation. And some of the nonprofit roles that you'll see through Taproot or potentially through other volunteerism intermediaries as well are definitely more broad. Instead of um, someone in the social media space being asked to, we'll focus on creating a campaign for us on Instagram. Instead, a nonprofit will likely be looking for something a lot more far reaching. Like, could you help us just inform our social media strategy for the year? And so if you're in one of those positions where maybe you're doing something really niche or really specific at a company, I, I really would encourage you to just stay open to these broader expertise um, requests that are coming from nonprofits because it's an amazing flex opportunity for you. And I think it hits on a lot of the points Jeff was just sharing around skill development, um, but skill development in a way that's rooted in expertise that you do already have. You're just flexing it to meet uh, the nonprofit's needs. 
Um, so definitely take these in when we share out the PDF of the deck later and you'll have our contact information in case you do have any more questions specifically on just how your experience can translate into this new sector. But for right now, I do wanna just quickly jump to how you can actually connect with nonprofits, how you can start to give back while building your resume uh, through Taproot specifically. So I will share a little bit more information and I appreciate there's been a few questions about Taproot services specifically, so I'll try and hit on um, some of those as I go. But this taprootplus.org website, um, and Megan has put the URL at the very top of the slide for you. So please go click in if you don't yet have a Taproot account. Um, but Taproot Plus is really going to be your front door to Taproot's full suite of programming. And so here you'll find information about how to join our community. Um, and Taproot Plus is our free online nonprofit volunteer matchmaking platform. And as I mentioned, this is your door to accessing services through our nonprofit. Um, it's free to have an account. It's free for nonprofits to request services, and it's free for volunteers to use this to find causes that they would like to support. So I did see a question come in earlier about kind of who pays for this. Uh, so Taproot Foundation is a nonprofit ourselves. And so we source funding similarly to many other nonprofits. I know a few of them are on the line here from individual donors, um, as well as foundations and companies. We also act as a uh, employee engagement and social impact consultants to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, that's actually a large part of Jeff's role um, at the organization. Um, but all of that work and all of the donations that we source as a nonprofit help cover the cost for the Taproot Plus platform. So nonprofits never pay a fee for accessing any kind of support through Taproot. And I really wanna underline that here. We are an organization that exists to get nonprofits the resources they need. Uh, and pro bono isn't pro bono if nonprofits have to pay a fee for it. Um, so just a few other quick uh, facts here. This program is accessible to folks across the United States, UK, EU, Canada, and India. Um, and it's uh, open to organizations who are registered as a charity in any of those regions as well. Um, but to hit on a question I saw in the chat earlier, if an organization is registered as a charity in the US or the UK, just as an example, but then deliver services in Guatemala, or uh, Liberia, that's totally fine. They just have to be registered in one of the regions that our platform is accessible in. Um, and through the platform, you can find flexible, virtual, or local volunteering opportunities, ranging from one-hour consultations uh, to multi-week projects with nonprofits uh, you know, across issue areas. Um, and of course, you'll have full access to skills-based volunteerism resources and best practices networking, community building opportunities, um, and user support from the national leader in skills space volunteerism. So please do click that link at the top of your slide. The account setup process, I promise we've tried to keep it as easy as possible. Um, you can use your LinkedIn account to even speed up the process a little bit, uh, a little bit further. Um, and then you'll be ready to start finding a volunteer opportunity. Um, and I'll let Jeff speak to kind of our two main options um, in a little bit more detail. Um, and so, Jeff, why don't I just pass things right off to you? Uh, thanks, Kim. Um, yeah, for folks that are on the call, uh, the most important thing, I think, is something Segova uh, had mentioned in the chat, and that is um, get committed to the idea. Um, think about the fact that you've probably served as a skill-based volunteer in some way before, and this is an opportunity to tap root to just formalize it. When you're So get your heart in the right space. This is an adventure. Um, it's something that you know more than you probably think that you do. Um, it's important to uh, get over maybe those feelings of uncertainty. Um, Skill-based volunteering is not heart surgery. Uh, and so uh, the skills that you were provided are needed. You know that because the volunteer, the nonprofit organizations are asking for that. And so for a session, it's a one-hour conversation. Uh, nonprofits are seeking to talk about a problem, 
talk about a challenge, uh, talk about something that they may not uh, be certain about whether they're moving in the right direction. And it's an opportunity for you as a volunteer to provide your perspective through conversation. And in preparing for that, uh, it's important for a volunteer um, to just do a little bit of research on the organization um, and think about what it is that the organization had said that they needed help with. And then it's a one hour phone call, um, just as simple as, as that, um, building a relationship and staying um, non-committal after that. But if you so choose, you can follow up with an email about how lovely it was to chat, resources that you may have talked about in the conversation um, and encouraging them to, to move forward. Uh, and then um, these are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, are, are typical outcomes of that one hour conversation. Tips, advice, validation, telling somebody they're heading in the right direction or the wrong direction. Another opportunity to engage as a skill-based volunteer through Taproot Plus would be through a longer term uh, project, outcome oriented in nature. Uh, here too, uh, you have an opportunity as a skill-based volunteer to get a sense of what a nonprofit needs, have a conversation to understand if um, you're the right person for that volunteer work. Um, similarly, you would prepare yourself to understand what it is that the nonprofit is doing in a particular space, in a particular environment. Um, and if things work out, you're on your way um, to working on a longer term project with a distinct outcome that you're able to speak to as a skill based volunteer. Through Taproot Plus, we provide a scheduling feature that, again, tries to make it as easy as possible for the two of you connect. But with longer term projects, these projects can last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months based on the nature and scope of the work that you both agree to. Here are some of the examples of the outcomes that we see through Taproot Plus from skilled vice volunteers and nonprofits. Hopefully this resonates with many of you who talked about your data analytics and visualization skills, financial management skills. We have CPAs, but you don't need to be a CPA to help a nonprofit organization with their budgeting process or understand how to complete their 990 form. Graphic design, grant writing, huge opportunities to give organizations a boost. I see we've got some questions coming in, so this might be a good transition point uh, for some of those questions. Yeah, perfect idea, Jeff. Um, just to answer a quick logistical question first, uh, yes, Tiara, we are recording this event and we will try and get that out to all folks um, who registered either later this evening or tomorrow morning at the latest, and we'll include the PDF of the deck as well for you. And then Jeff, we'll be curious to hear your thoughts on a question from Ashvin around are the nonprofits expecting ideas and solutions during those one hour consultation calls that we were discussing? Or would it be more of like a get to know each other and just understand the problem or broadly type of call? It's a little bit of both. So great question, Ashvin, and, and thanks for bringing it to my attention, uh, Kim. But um, you have 60 minutes um, and you have a little bit of time before that 60 minutes begins to get a sense of what it is that nonprofit is looking for. So you're definitely not looking to solve all their problems in an hour. Um, Albert Einstein once said that if he was introduced with a problem and he had an hour to solve it, he'd spend 55 minutes about the problem and then five minutes on the solution. And so the balance I think is, is similar. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to, to think through, but you're bringing your expertise um, and your perspective to that phone conversation and so uh, whatever it is that you're able to leave the nonprofit with, that's important and valuable perspective that they wouldn't otherwise get without you stepping in. Yeah, I completely agree. Lead with curiosity. Don't immediately jump into whether it's one of these one hour consultation sessions or a multi-week project. Um, don't immediately jump into trying to apply a solution you may have used in another space, maybe from the corporate world or from your own uh, current organization into this nonprofit, because it's not gonna be apples to apples. You're going to need to do a lot of discovery work and ask really open-ended questions to allow the nonprofits um, to share with you the feedback, 
um, and knowledge you'll need to shape a solution to their specific environment. So these one hour consultation calls, uh, I highly recommend for folks who are new to skills-based volunteerism or folks who maybe just have a more crowded schedule these days. Um, I know I'm in that bucket right now and I love signing up for Taproot Plus sessions because it's kind of a quick hit of, all right, I'm getting to build my consultant skills um, and I'm also getting to answer questions and make an immediate impact on a nonprofit in just 60 minutes. So that's my current favorite. And I definitely recommend um, for folks who are a little newer to this. All right, I see a question around what's our current success rate? What percentage of applications are eventually connected to an NGO? It's a really good question. And frankly, I'm going to give a not so great answer because it really does uh, vary. The quality of your statement of interest really helps determine whether a nonprofit uh, is going to respond favorably to your application. Something that uh, we kind of zoomed through on this slide around transitioning corporate expertise to the nonprofit sector was the very last bullet on here is treat skills-based volunteerism like paid work. One of the ways Taproot builds that into our process is that every time you connect with a nonprofit through Taproot Plus, you have to submit your resume, uh, you can link your LinkedIn uh, profile, um, and you also have to share a statement of interest, almost like a mini cover letter explaining to the nonprofit why you think you're the best fit for that role. And we tell nonprofits the same rule as well. Nonprofits need to treat pro bono consultants like they would a paid contractor or a paid staff member they're bringing on to their team so that you both feel like you have skin in the game. You're both getting extremely valuable benefits from this partnership and you need to go into it taking it seriously. And so as you're crafting that statement of interest, think about what you would say to a potential employer if you were trying to get their interest as they're scanning through applications. Um, because sometimes nonprofits are reviewing you know, three, four, five applications from different volunteers for just one project. Um, and so the put a little bit of time and energy into it and definitely call out your personal connection to the mission. And that's going to help your application kind of rise to the surface for these nonprofits. Is there anything you would want to add to that, Jeff? Uh, no, those are all very good points, uh, Kim. So I appreciate that. And, and see, we're coming up on time, but didn't want to leave Brian uh, without an answer to his question since it came in um, just just as we're winding up. Um, and that is, um, Brian, um, Taproot Plus is looking for at least three years of professional experience um, in the field uh, that you are saying to a nonprofit that you are qualified to bring to them. That could be in your current role, but it also could be in past roles uh, as well or it could be um, positional experience that you had, perhaps even as a skill-based volunteer, if you're confident in bringing that. And Kim had talked about the statement of interest. That is an excellent space to further explain what it is that you are bringing to the nonprofit organization and importantly, why as, as well. Yeah, really, really good point. And um, something to really think about here is that these nonprofits, especially Taproot's community of nonprofits, because we're, we're free to use and uh, there's not many resources out there like us. Um, and so that means that our community is made up of a lot of really small grassroots led organizations who maybe have really tiny budgets, really small staff, maybe no paid staff members at all. So these organizations likely won't have anyone on staff with the same professional expertise as you. And so just using Salesforce as the example, uh, if you come in as kind of maybe only having a month or two of Salesforce experience and then expecting someone to like mentor you and help train you up on that, the nonprofit's not going to have that ability, likely. 
And they're also likely not going to have the time and energy available to be a mentor or like a trainer for you in a professional area. So they're looking for an expert to kind of step in that they can trust to just execute on their own. So that's why pro bono is a great place for soft skill development or flexing things that you've already uh, had an opportunity to use on the job, as Jeff mentioned, but it's not a great place to learn brand new professional competencies. All right, I'm just scanning the chat. I know we're a couple minutes over, um, but really appreciate you all for hanging with us for an extra one or two minutes. Um, we will send you an email later today or tomorrow morning. And so you'll have our contact information. Uh, you'll have this deck, the recording. You'll have the link to how to create an account on Taproot. Uh, so we really hope that that's where we're able to keep up with you and help you find opportunities with all of those amazing social causes that you all shared earlier that you're really, really passionate about. That's what our team is here for. Um, so please continue to use us as a resource for that. All right, well, thank you everyone. We'll go ahead and end it here and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye now. Thanks everybody, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Jeff.